Welcome. In this video, we will guide you through creating cloud storage for a backup exec virtual server that is deployed in Azure. We will start by opening up the Microsoft Azure console, where we will go to the virtual machines and see that there are two that have been deployed. B Azure, which is the backup exec server, Baz Remote, which is just a Windows server. Right click the B Azure server to open the context menu and select the connect option, which will open up an RDP connection to the virtual machine in the cloud. As normal for any RDP connection, we will provide the credentials needed to log on. When logged on, you can see that this looks like any remote Windows server you are connected to using RDP. Let's open Backup Exec. The Backup Exec configuration in this video has already been licensed. First time opening after a deploy, you will see it will be a trial version of the software running in evaluation. The BE Azure deployment uses a bring your own license model, which means that after the 60 days evaluation, a license will be needed to be provided for the product to continue running backups. Before we can run any backups, we need to add some storage that we can write the backups to. So let's go to the Backup Exec Storage tab. There we click on Configure Cloud Storage. For a Backup Exec server that is deployed in the Azure Cloud, we are not limited to using just Azure Cloud Storage and the Backup Exec Cloud Connector. You can add a data disk and configure any supported type of disk storage like backup to disk, deduplication storage, etc. The Configure Storage wizard will ask for the friendly name of the device. This can be anything you would want to use that is meaningful. In this video, we'll call it Azure Cloud Storage and then click Next. We then select Azure as the provider we wish to use and click Next. Please take note of the information we give at this point in regards to encryption and verify. We now need to choose the type of Azure Cloud Storage to use as shown in the drop down. We choose Azure. Next, we need to provide the logon account so we can log into the Azure Cloud Storage and add it as a storage device. The logon account was already created and the name is the name of the storage account, then click Next. At this point, it will take a few seconds before the next screen appears as, in the background, we are connecting to Azure and getting the list of available containers. While on the topic of containers, the containers used for cloud storage for backup exec must only be used for this purpose, and typically the storage account would be configured as blob storage. When the list of available containers appears, choose the one that you want to connect to. In this example, there is currently only one container listed for us to use, so we will use that. Clicking next, choose the number of concurrent operations, which is how many jobs you can run to this device at the same time. We will leave it at the default of two. Clicking next, this shows us the summary of what we have just selected. Always review this before clicking on finish. It will now create the device in Backup Exec. We will click OK on the first pop-up and then No on the second pop-up so that we do not restart the services yet. When you provide a logon account to do a configuration that is not the Backup Exec system account, it will not have the rights to restart the services. The storage configuration wizard is now completed, but the new device needs to be discovered by Backup Exec, and to do that, we need to restart the Backup Exec services. We will open the Backup Exec services manager from the gear icon on the Backup Exec user interface status bar. If more than one server is listed, choose the appropriate server and click restart all services to initiate the discovery of the newly added storage device. We will let the services complete the restart and then close the services manager. In the storage tab, you can see the status is discovering devices and the device we just added is still offline. It will then go online while the status is still discovering for a bit longer before it completes. This device is now ready for use. If you wish to add additional disk volumes to this virtual machine, you can create backup to disk deduplication storage or open dedupe storage the same way as you would for an on-premise backup exec server. We now have a storage device we can write to and restore from. Let's add a cloud deployed remote server that we can backup and restore to. To do that, go to the backup and restore tab and click add in the ribbon bar. We are presented server options and make our choices based on what we are adding. In this example, we are adding a Windows server, so we select that and then we click Next. We tick the necessary checkbox to establish a trust and click Next. Now we will need to tell Backup Exec something about the server we want to add so that we can find it. 
If you are in a domain network, instead of typing in the name, you can browse to it and select the servers you want to add. In this example, we need to type it in before we click next. The logon account for this example is the same as the system logon account. If it had been different, we would have needed to add a new logon account before proceeding. You can leave the default checkbox settings as they are. Typically, you would need to plan a convenient time to reboot, but if it's okay to do it now, tick the second checkbox as well. We click next to see the summary and then click on install and it will do just that. It will connect using the given credentials, push the binaries and complete the installation. We then click finish to exit the install wizard. So now we have what we need to do a backup, so let's get a job created. To start the job creation, you can right click on the resource name in the backup and restore tab, click on backup in the menu and select backup to cloud to use the device we have just created. It asks you here what the backup method should be. As we detect the server is virtual, we recommend using virtual based backup method, but in the cloud we cannot use this interface, for now, and can only use agent based backup. We select that and click next. All, all resources are selected on the server by default, so we are going to edit that and just select a folder on the C volume. All we are showing here is that there is really no difference between how we work with a cloud virtual machine or any on-premise server physical or virtualized. We are just going with the default scheduling options, so click OK and the jobs are created. In the job monitor tab, we can now see these new jobs. So right click on the full job and choose to run now. Respond yes to the start job pop-up and the job will start. The job ran through and was successful. Now let's connect to the remote server and delete a folder. Let's do a quick restore of this simple backup. We start this off by right clicking on the resource and then choosing restore. The only option available is files, folders and volumes, so we click next here. For this example, we want to do a restore from a backup set, so we select that. In the next screen, we expand the tree until we see the folder we want to restore and select just that. We accept all the defaults for this restore job and click finish to complete the wizard. The job starts immediately and completes successfully. If we then go back to the remote server, the restored data can be seen. That concludes this demonstration, where we have shown you how to create cloud storage for a backup exec 16 server that is deployed in Azure. Thank you for watching this video and look out for others in the future. Also, remember to visit our support pages at www.veritas.com support for further information.